How far do you want to run this year and what's the best way to enjoy building up your endurance without fatigue and injury? This year, whether building your mileage means aiming for your first 5k or an ultra marathon, these endurance tips from top athletes like Olympic triathlete Johnny Brownlee and inspiring country crossing runners like Brendan Rendell and Anna McNuff will help you run further with ease. Good luck, have fun, enjoy your run and I'll see you on the trails. This film is powered by Road ID. Be adventurous, be safe, wear a Road ID. I think we are all capable of so, so much more and we put barriers up. Financial, I can't do it. And I think everything in life, it's same with endurance running, we are capable of so much more. I've come from someone that hasn't run. Uh, I started in 2006 and I've achieved what I've done and I'm just an ordinary person. I don't live in the gym, I don't train every day. My diet isn't always the most healthiest. Um, so I think we're all capable of so much more and I think my run across Africa rents, um, represents that ordinary people really can go on and achieve far more than what we, the barrier we put up. Endurance, what are you trying to achieve? Are you trying to be, have endurance over 20 minutes or are you trying to have endurance for an ultra race? What are you trying to achieve uh, and then how are you going to get there? But most importantly, how are you going to stay motivated to do it? To that, because you know you're, you ain't going to run four hours every day if you're not motivated. So your endurance is only as good as your motivation. Get strong before you increase your distance. Yeah, so we need to have good stability in our knees, hips, ankles, um, before we start ramping up the mileage. Otherwise, we're just gonna get ourselves hurt. So we'll really work on that strength to start with. Uh, my second tip would be to slow down. Yeah, pure endurance training comes at a much slower pace than you, than you might expect. As a general rule, if you can breathe through your nose as you run along, you're probably about right. So it's probably a lot slower than, you, than you'd expect. Well, we're talking about the Maffetone method at the moment. It's all about running slow. So you're getting that nice, sort of be able to chat. It's like a fun run. Um, and then that builds a really good aerobic base. Um, try and get a long run in at least every week. I, I try on a weekend, maybe one Saturday or a Sunday as part of my training. Um, and that way you're not just building the mileage up, you're doing it consistently and over a period of time. And that is, in itself is going to build endurance. I'm not an ultra runner, but I do have to do some endurance. Uh, well, to build endurance is simply about training, and about training hours. So my big advice for that is to be consistent. So you're five hours off, aiming for you know, 10 hours every week or six hours every week then you are doing 15 hours one week and then having a couple weeks no training so just be consistent so get your diary what does the average day or week look like and then what i'm looking for in that week uh, i'm looking for a long run you know so definitely building up from you know what where where your base is you know you can't go out and run if you've only run 2k you can't go and run 10k to start with because you're going to more likely get injury you're going to get hacked off you're just never going to do it again so nice and gradually five percent this sort of increase in distance max over the weeks go and do some hill reps wow <laughs> um, go do some interval training you know go and make yourself run a little bit faster than you normally and then it's almost going out also and doing what well, you know kind of a temp or threshold run so it's not too uncomfortable but it's on the edge of uncomfortable and you know make yourself run progressively longer at that point. Going and doing drills especially and speed work can really like loosen up your body, uh, get you a nice running stride and just improve everything really. I mean you're only going to get so much better if you plod away continually but by doing speedier sessions you can um, yeah, you can make improvements a lot faster. I mean there's a lot of mountain ultra runners that don't like the track but I, I like all types of running and sometimes it can be fun to go up to a track and just run really fast. I mean that's another type of running that's just it's fun. So. Um, Something like uh, 400 meter repeats with 30 seconds break, for example. Uh, that can be like kind of fun, I think, especially if you do it like a group of you and it's like a little group of Kenyans like, running around together. It can be, it can be really cool. So uh, make sure you do some drills and a good warm up before and then some stretching and a cool down afterwards and uh, put yourself a good session. The longest I've done was the Marathon des Sables, which is 150 miles through the Sahara. Unfortunately, the problem with endurance running is there's no shortcut to do it. So the top tip for getting good at running a long way is to run a long way and there's no real way around that so start with what you can run now and then next week run a mile further next week run a mile further than that and by the end of the year you'll be able to run 52 miles further
just keep pushing your limits so if you think you know if you've run 5k or 10k and then you put, put like a 12k or 13k like in the diary but you don't have to every time go out and try and beat it and, and make sure you're enjoying yourself as well you know if you don't want to go and run some ridiculous distance on a certain day just change your mind do it on a day when you're feeling fresher and you've got more energy be kind to yourself basically a little bit of self-love that's what we all need <laughs> Well, you have to build up really gradually, and the best way of doing that, like I said, uh, enjoying it is really important. So if you're pushing too far that it's not fun anymore, it's maybe a little bit too far for your body, and as, as your body improves and everything gets better, you'll kind of readjust and you'll be able to run these longer distances. But the most important thing is the psychological aspect. Everyone can run 100 miles. It's just going to take people different amounts of time. So some people take a week, some people will take 20 hours, some people will take like a year, but you're going to get there in the end. So just know that it is possible. It's just the more you train, the better you get at it, so the quicker it's going to happen. Increase your mileage slowly, so you're, you're lowering your risk of your injury. I think that's really, really important. And I think be patient as well, because sometimes even now, leading into my big endurance runs, I have bad days and I think, how can I run, you know, the following week, run a 25 to 30? I think you've got to be patient. I think you've got to listen to your body. You want, you want longevity, you don't want to get injured. I did do that a little bit, especially last year, but more with height climb. So I'd start with uh, 6,000 metres, no, more like 4,000 metres in a week, then five, then six, and then drop it back and have a rest week, and then do uh, six, seven, eight, for example, and then drop it back and then do seven, eight, nine. So do something like that, but really, I think just getting out there and everything will just gradually improve on its own. I mean, uh, just have a training philosophy, kind of follow it and get out there and try and enjoy it as much as possible and that make you want to go and do more of it. Endurance, endurance for me is almost more of, a, again, a mental thing rather than a physical thing. I did kind of fast track a little bit. It would be a very ill-advised training plan, I think. I kind of skipped the couch to 5K and went from couch to ultramarathon in about six months is probably physically not advisable but again because I'm very slow I'm just taking it steady and, and if you listen to your body and don't push too hard then then you'll be okay I think I mean don't quote me medically I'm gonna run across the Southern Alps in New Zealand as part of my project to run across the mountain range on every continent endurance is something that you can always increase and in, but you gotta increase it gradually you can't just jump up to 5k to ultra and um, so I like just building quite slowly and I like to keep track so I have to use things like Strava or like actually use the spreadsheet and write down like what I do so I can actually see what my total mileage is and make sure that I am just slightly increasing things and building and um, again listen to your body make sure that you're going at a pace that you can actually handle increasing it and it's just it's something that takes time it just takes years I mean you have to be patient right because endurance takes what well, it takes probably like years and years to actually get it into your bones um, but I would say I think every time you don't have to always be going out to go further than you have done before and I think allowing yourself weeks where you have a week of rest like I'm really really bad I always want to do more because I think more I'm getting faster but actually the best thing to do sometimes is to have a light week and to sleep a lot like really make sure you get some good sleep um, because I think it's very it's very easy to say well there's one I've got so much to do and I've got to get my training in I'm just going to sleep less and actually I find that I just end up as a horrendous human being when I don't sleep. Rest. The benefit from the training comes in the recovery, not in the uh, in the time spent out on the trail. So uh, give yourself a good rest. And especially in the winter when we're more vulnerable to picking up a cold or a virus, uh, you've got to get your, get your body, listen to your body and give it some chance to recover. So obviously when I'm on a challenge, you don't listen to your body, you block it out because obviously things are hurting and you have, you've got a, a job to do, so to speak. But if I was training for it, my goal is that race. My goal is to run for many years to come. So if I have got a niggle or I have you know, I'm feeling really tired what, like sometimes, like I run back from work and I'm running back and I'm halfway and I feel really tired. I think, do you know what? I ran this mile up today. Let's put a full stop there, get on the bus, get home, get to bed early, refresh, and then let's revisit, revisit it the following day. I think it's just being very sensible. Um, there is no rush, particularly if your your goal is distance running, maybe it's a, a half marathon, marathon or ultra. Um, you know, don't set your target on being the fastest uh, at your race that you've chosen to do or the distance that you've chosen to do. Set your goals on actually finishing the distance. Then once you've got that under your belt and you know how you feel, you know what's going to ache, um, what's going to take the longest or the shortest time to heal afterwards, then you can maybe look at the same distance and, you know, improving your PB, improving your personal best. Or if you've managed to do the distance, you know, well and you feel quite secure with it, a couple more um, um, 
practice runs of the same length or even a couple more events of that distance and then again step up to the longer distance maybe marathon and then in you know in in, in, the, in the distance uh, look towards an ultra and, you know i use the word race quite loosely don't don't be put off with that word race and um, you know, if you if you set your own targets and your own goals, you, you, it's, it's you against the course, really. A marathon goal is just as valid as the f person running their first 5K. It's the same. We have this badge of honour where they've run a marathon. It really is irrelevant. It's about what is your challenge and are you going to go for it? Uh, and it's the same. Perhaps your endurance and your aerobic endurance comes from swimming a lot, biking a lot. Um, you know, it's not about always having to run. Try and practice running long distances on the same kind of terrain that you're going to be racing on. Uh, it's ideally on the actual course itself. Um, I know a lot of people, um, you know, do that uh, for kind of ultra runs. They'll do sections of it over a period of time, which is a great, you know, idea in itself. You're getting the long running, and also you're getting to visualise and practice on what you're going to do uh, in the race itself. So I think if you can break it into sections. So let's say, for example, I was doing a 20 mile race, which for me is quite a long distance. I'd maybe break it into four sections. So you've got four sections of five and just focus on that section so that you're not thinking about the thing as a whole. You're thinking about chunking it and, and that way it helps time to pass. And also um, you're not overfaced by the challenge itself. They always say that endurance racing, ultra distance, multi-day is is just a massive eating competition with a bit of running thrown in. Well, I like food, so I'm, I'm always <laughs> I don't find it hard eating at any time, really. Um, but one thing I do find hard is is kind of chewing the food. So I, I try and think about something that's going to be easy to digest, but also easy to swallow and easy to chew. Um, I really like Snickers, but if I take a Snickers uh, in winter on like a, a long run, um, it gets frozen and I can't eat it. It just it's sat in my mouth and I'm chewing it and I spend all my energy and all my time trying to eat it. I can't get my, my breathing right. So I try and use things like gels, if I'm honest, because I'm not out for, for that long compared to say an ultra run. Um, and it's just easy to digest. Um, so it's something that's just quick and easy, maybe some, um, I don't know, like uh, the, the, the sport jellies, that kind of thing. Yeah, just just um, banana is a good one, although that would get crushed in your bag. I, I tend to have that before a race. During a race, I can get away with gels usually. So 2016, I ran the length of Malawi, followed by Great Britain. So obviously my foundation uh, base of mileage was there. Um, and then I sort of kept it going really, um, but not running like huge amounts of mileage. Um, and I do think there's a slight theory with this one. I actually went back to send up to 17 stone three months before I ran across Africa. So I went back down to 14 stone before the run. And I think there is a little bit, the first two weeks were tough. I felt tired, I didn't feel right, I felt a bit overweight. But I think if you go into a marathon, you go into it trained to peak. With these big ones, you get fitter as you go. So as I got to halfway, I then started to just 30 miles just felt like normal, like I was just getting up to do it. And my brain, the, the routine and everything just clicked. So I think there is, for me, it worked going in slightly unfitter because you get that sort of peak up because otherwise you don't want to go overtrain going into it. But that's, again, works for me. Someone else would work differently because I think as runners, we all have to find our own way that works for us. If you just keep going, there will come a moment where you feel quite good again. You know, I've been many races where I felt terrible at, I don't know, 20, 30, 40, 50 kilometers, and then another 10 kilometers down the, down the road. Suddenly you, you feel re-energized and you feel strong. And you're like, oh, I'm fine now, I'm great. So never think at some point going, oh, this isn't going well, I can't do it. It's too, you know, just push on through again, just push on through a bit more and then you get the good point. And then you get to that next level and the next level. And that again, helps the endurance. And it helps you to remember that as well, that when it is quite painful or quite difficult, it will get better. I just kept taking it back to things, the extreme poverty that I saw. I just kept thinking this pain is just temporary. This is not, it's insignificant, it will pass. And that's how I just basically took it back to just the mile and that step at the time. It's about moving out of our comfort zone and you don't want to get to a certain age and say, what if you want to say, I don't know.